I think I read about 10 books 10 or 11 books this summer I'm gonna go through all of them as quick as I possibly can I'm gonna give you a rating for them if I enjoyed them overall and then who I think the book will be perfect for So I'm going to start with the first book that I read this summer. I don't actually have it on hand, but I did read the physical copy of Six of Crows by Lee Berdugo. I really loved this book. It was one of the first like fantasy, like fantasy fantasy books I've ever read. It follows a group of six people, six individuals who have varying backgrounds, but they all kind of fit in the realm of like teenage criminal essentially and they come together to pull off this very impossible heist of stealing somebody that is locked up in an impenetrable prison in an icy kingdom. Every single chapter is a different perspective from each character. I really love that about this story and I really love those type of stories when they're done really really well and this one is done really really well. This is kind of my late review of the Six of Crows duology because I also read the second book which is Crooked Kingdom. I have a physical copy right here. Uh, this was a pretty thick book, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this is like one of the thickest books I've read thus far and again I was very blown away by every chapter being written as a different perspective from a different person. It's very attention grabbing when you first start so I really enjoyed both Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. Um, Crooked Kingdom picks up exactly where it left off which is my favorite thing when authors do that. I know what was going on in the last one. I don't want any space in between. I don't want 15 years later. I don't want two months later. I want the moment that the last book ended. So this was perfect. Uh, if you liked Six of Crows you will absolutely love this. Uh, I would give Six of Crows probably a like four out of five, four and a half out of five. This is a five out of five. I will not accept any criticism over this book at all whatsoever. It had everything you would need in an adventure fantasy style book. It had a love interest, it had multiple love interests, but it didn't overtake the story. It had a lot of action, it had a lot of like mystery. You were sitting there thinking like what is gonna happen next, which is very very fun to read and I got engulfed into the story so easily and I just loved it. The next book that I read this summer is called Iron Widow by Shin J. Zhao. I really enjoyed reading this book. I gave this book as a whole like a three I think a three and a half I think it's a very well written book I think the story is really interesting a like teenage girl who is in this like super patriarch patriarchal society where everything is like hyper focused for men women are thought of as like literally just to make more children preferably boys and then to fight in this war and it is a mech story so it is about giant fighting robots the main character ends up enlisting so she get revenge for her sister who was killed by one of the pilots the pilot system is set up as one man one woman in each robot the men basically overtake the women in power level and so they kind of kill them so it is a very intricate story it is very interesting I was not expecting a lot of the things that happened in the story kind of started to lose me and I will say it's my own like biases because when I was reading a part about her family it just reminded me a lot of my family and I I was very not cool with the way that everything happened after that the end though the end of this book is extremely satisfying I will say that that is an extremely satisfying ending that's how you make an ending to a book. The fighting stuff I wasn't really interested in. I was more interested in the dynamics between main character and her best friend and then her new pilot partner. It is an extremely queer book as well which I really loved. The major point obviously is like gender roles and how they don't matter in actuality. The character uh, herself is very like gender fluid in like the way that she thinks. If you like uh, drama, action, giant robots, this is probably the best you're gonna get. <laughs> this book that I read is actually the Kindle version. It is This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barrent. Is a <laughs> it is an amazing book. I really enjoyed every little aspect of that book as a whole. I would probably give it about a four out of five or four and a half out of five. This was my first introduction to Barron's writing, and I was so intrigued. It felt like home in a sense. The descriptions for things, the little jokes for things, because all of the characters as far as I can tell are all black doing things that like I do like like wearing my bonnet. So those are like little very small aspects of the book but it made it feel very like homey and just 
very, very relatable. It's about a teenage girl who has these very interesting powers. Plants just seem to be attracted to Brie. I'm gonna call her Brie because that's what everyone in her family calls her. She is just extremely well-versed when it comes to like botanical life. Trees, little flowers, grass, like plants of all different kinds love her and they always try to like reach out to her. You find out that her birth mother had a sister, passed away, and left the entire estate to Brie. Both of her moms, uh, and when I say both of her moms, I mean she has two moms, she adopted her. Let's go gaze. And so <laughs> we go to the estate and things are not as they seem. The estate might actually be a missing link to how Brie got her power, what her family, her birth family was like, and everything else that comes along with getting a free house and a free special poison garden that's in the backyard. It's a lot of magic. Uh, Greek mythology has like a twist in it as well. Loved how realistic everything was, even though it is 100% like a fantasy story. The next book after that is This Wicked Fate. It is part of the duology of This Poison Heart, This Wicked Fate. This Wicked Fate made me cry in the gym. I was not expecting it to hit me as hard as it did. I actually originally started reading those two books because of a TikTok that I saw. In passing, someone just kind of mentioned it as, oh, this is a book that made me cry. So like, oh, let me see what this is about. It looks interesting. I read a little bit about it. I was like, okay, I don't want to spoil too much. And then that's when I read the first one. The second one is better than the first one, in my opinion. It picks up exactly where the last book ends off, which I love. Everything that happens in the first book kind of comes crashing down in like the first like two minutes and then gets built back up. Like immediately you're like, okay, there is a solution, we got this. But it's a lot of trying to salvage things that happened in the first book, a lot of like deep connections between the characters. And you get to learn a lot about Brie and her like biological family, but you also get to learn a lot about Brie and her adoptive family and who Brie is at her core. It has a lot more to do with Greek mythology in the second book, so if that's something that interests you, but you don't like things that are like exactly Greek mythology, just something that's like loosely based off of it, that's gonna be something that interests you for sure. Like, it's not like this, oh, I'm a hero and you know we're gonna go get this done. It's like, hey, friend, thank you for loving me through all of my like mishaps and my misadventures. I love you. Thank you for spending all of this time with me and I would have never wanted anybody else but you to travel along with me and do this journey with me that is life. Thank you so much for everything that you do. That's, that's what they're saying. I'm like, what the hell is this? Why are you, why am I crying at the gym? Is this what? No, it's, it's tears. It's my fucking tears. The second book, this Wicked Fate, five out of five. I will accept absolutely no judgment on that book. I do not care. It is amazing. I love it. It was so good. So the next book that I read this summer is called Warrior Girl on Earth. This book was by Angeline Boli. I love, 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 loved this book so very much. I went into it not really knowing that much about it. A couple people suggested books to start reading. I'm a new reader. I'm kind of taking all suggestions that people give to me. It is about a teenage girl. Her name is Perry Firekeeper. The year is 2014 and so there's a lot of things going on socially. There are a lot of people going missing, specifically women going missing uh, in her tribe and in local tribes. She ends up spending her summer trying to help her tribe's museum get back the remains of her ancestors. You learn a lot about the United States like legal system and how it affects indigenous people. If you don't know about those things already, you're learning with Perry. She's also trying to balance everyday teenage life where it is like love and like, your siblings and your dog and your garden and your fishing because she loves to fish. And she takes on the challenges with her sister, with her best friend, and then this new guy that she is interested in. And so it's just a great read. I really loved it. Definitely a four out of five. And I actually loved it so much. I'm gonna go read the book that came before that. They're not 100% connected, but it's just the book that came before that. And it's called Firekeeper's Daughter. The next book that I have for you is a book talk book that I've been wanting to talk about for a while because I did not enjoy this book at all. And I've been trying to put into words why I didn't like the book, but I did finish it. This is Colleen Hoover's book, Verity, follows uh, Lowen, who is a author that writes a lot of thriller books. She is offered to finish Verity's 
a series of books. I think it's like three books that she has to complete because Verity is unable to complete them. Makes a lot of money. She's very, very popular. Everyone knows her work. So Lowen uh, kind of begrudgingly accepts the offer because Verity's husband reaches out and says like, please accept the offer. He convinces Lowen to go to their home, Verity and her husband Jeremy's home. While she's there, there's a bunch of creepy stuff that starts happening. She finds a autobiography that Verity wrote. And as she's reading it, she's finding out very, very dark things about Verity. So I have a couple gripes with this book. Part of me knows that like, I am not really a thriller baddie. I am not really a violence baddie. I'm not a gore baddie. So I don't know what I thought I was getting into when I read this. I think I was just taking everybody's like advice and thinking like, oh, I can just like go through it. So I would say like some of the violence is like unnecessary. The like realism kind of leaves towards the end. It kind of just got like silly almost. It like lost a little bit of the plot. It's too much. I think the sex scenes, the conversations about the sex, I think all of that was just too much unnecessary and boring. Also, last thing, is the characters are very, very unlikable. Um, I did not like one character in here except for the son. The son who was like a six-year-old who could do no wrong because of his innocence. That's the only character that I enjoyed. Everyone else was very annoying to read about and to like be around. I think it was creepy. I did get creeped out at least two times, I will say that, but it just wasn't for me. I won't be giving any of her other books a read. But yeah, so two stars for Verity by Colleen Hoover. So the next book that I have for you on this list is A Psalm for the Wild Bill by Becky Chambers. Uh, this book I did a full review already on my channel so that's going to be linked somewhere on the screen right now. It's about a monk and a robot and how their worlds collide in a very cozy, warm, short story about feeling burnt out. It's also about growth and about uh, responsibility and how we feel so attached to those things instead of just kind of like being yourself. I definitely give it a five out of five. And I also realized that it might sound like I give a lot of books five out of fives, but I think I just know myself very well. So if I like a book, I like it. And if I don't like a book, I don't. And if I don't think I'm gonna like it, I'm probably not gonna read it. The next book that I have for you is called uh, Where the Forest Meets the Stars. This book actually took me by surprise. I kind of just read it because it's on Kindle Unlimited right now. And it's one of my most recently finished books. I thought it was gonna be like some mystical fantasy type story. It is about a college kid who is a recent cancer survivor. He is kind of just getting back into the swing of things. He's doing a lot of research surrounding birds. And while she's doing her research, she stumbles upon this young girl, who's probably like 10 years old or so. This girl is extremely intelligent. She memorizes things very well. She reads very heavy books like literally the main character's college textbooks. The main character kind of uh, develops a motherly attitude toward the young girl. So it's a very beautiful and like soft and gentle story until towards the end of the book. It seems so so normal and then everything kind of just like goes left. I would give this a like three and a half to four stars. I think it was very well written. Uh, definitely made me cry. I was in my bed at like one in the morning and I was crying. I think that one would be really enjoyable if you like slow burn romances, family drama getting solved, those type of things, then you will definitely enjoy this book. Okay, so the next book that I read this summer, I guess, is <laughs> The Psalm of Achilles follows Patroclus, who is a uh, companion of Achilles. He is originally in, I think, the Iliad. I don't know actually how to pronounce it. That's my guess of how to pronounce it. This book kind of takes their relationship and like tells the entire lifespan of Patroclus. He was born, uh, how he was exiled, and how he met Achilles, and then how their relationship blossomed, and then how they went to Troy, everything that happened while they were at Troy, and then also their both of their demises when they have passed away. I actually read this in between This Poison Heart and This Wicked Fate. I was recognizing some of the names in both stories, and so it was really fun read. It was very heavy. There is a lot of content warnings. I did have to skip like a couple things. I'm not a huge smut person. It's just not my thing. That's also why I don't like romance because sex scenes just feel awkward to me. Like reading about how people talk to each other and how they love each other and because I'm a huge like words of affirmation person but like the physical stuff I'm just boring. Skip. I think it was very interesting perspective and 
they were like truly in love in this book and the ending was satisfying to me it was it was greatly satisfying that book i would give it about a three and a half or a four and if you are into like queer stories like i was talking about earlier with this wicked fate then if you love greek mythology you'll probably love this double check with all of the content warnings and everything else to make sure that this is something that you will like to read or be interested in reading right and the last two books that i read this summer i actually finished uh the last week of august which was last week so it is the cirque du freak stories there's assistant is the second book i can't think of the first one cirque du freak a living nightmare and cirque du freak uh vampire's assistant because if you don't recognize them they are children's books the reason i read those is because i'm doing a video right now where i am rereading all of the books that i read as a child i don't want to spoil anything about that video because it's going to be coming out it's also going to be a vlog so it's a lot of me going to bookstores going to the library for the first time here first one the second one follows uh darren is like in middle school i believe ends up becoming a half vampire and he has to follow his vampire guardian around to learn how to be a half vampire and in the process he works at the Cirque du Freak. So it's a really cool fun series uh, but it's also really scary. When I was a little kid I remember reading it for the first time or reading like a horror a uh, series that was very violent, very gory, very bloody. I literally stopped reading Twilight as a kid to read the Cirque du Freak series but I don't want to say too much else about the books. You can just watch that video and get more information about how I felt about those books. All right, so those are all the books that I read this summer. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, like I said, I do have some more really cool stuff coming up and enjoying my stay on booktube so far. I'm really excited to be doing even more things in the future. And if you would like to follow along with my new reading journey, feel free to subscribe, to like this video, tell me your favorite part or tell me what books you read this summer. And thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.